All right, so what is our video? I mean, what is our... Um, well, let's go over what we did in the last video, right? So last video, we just did nothing but refactor or reorganize our folder, folders, um, basically workspace. And then um, that's it. So this, in this video, we're actually going to start creating our own annotations and then reflection-based annotation processor, which is not necessarily an annotation processor like I explained before. So let's just go ahead and get started. Create an impact annotations. Okay, I'm just gonna go annotations. Okay, and then that one we're gonna have a let's, well, let's just create an annotation first. Let's call it I'm gonna call it inject. And your uh, retention will be runtime. So, um, annotations cannot be extended from other annotations, but if you want to have one annotation that basically adds the behavior of multiple others, you basically list them all um, up like this. So you can annotate an annotation basically. And a uh, retention policy basically means um, how far along your annotation will make it in the compile time. Through compilation, basically, if you if you tag it along with runtime, it will be available to you in runtime also. If you are using an annotation, like a real annotation process, like I mentioned before, then you can make this compile time, and then um, it won't be available to you in, in runtime. So this is our annotation. Um, we're not gonna we're gonna keep it basic for now. Very simple. So this is our annotation, and we're gonna have our annotation. Pro well, is it close enough for you guys to see? This is what we did. Create our injector. You now, well, let's just give it some flavor. All right, so I added a value to it. That will be string, um, and you'll see what I why I did that in a bit. Go back to our injector. So this injector class will basically take in an instance of an object and then um, set the instances of each field that the class has that is annotated with our injection. I mean, not annotated with our inject uh, annotation. So let's go ahead. This is where all the magic is going to happen. All right, so we get our object. How do we tell which fields are annotated with our object, um, our injection annotation, right? So this is where reflection comes into play. And reflection only starts basically, okay, well, I'm just going to quickly go over what reflection is. Reflection is basically Java's ability to deconstruct classes and then gives them direct access, gives you direct access to all those deconstructed values. So you can deconstruct the class into its, its pieces such as methods, um, fields, constructors, things like that. So we're going to use, using reflection, we're going to have access to all of that. So let's do that. Check. Get class. All right. So we get class. Get declared. Looking to get fields. It returns an array of declared fields, but I don't know what it is. Declared fields. Oh, fields. Okay, so cool. As you can see, they're all under the reflect um, folder package that is supplied to you by Java. All right, so now that we have access to our field directly, field 
get annotation. And then we supply our annotation here. So I'm just trying to see if there's an has annotation method. I don't think there is. Just the way to check it, if the annotation exists on it is get annotation, and then you supply the class and it checks if the result is null, basically. Not equal to null. So if, it does, if it's not null, um, we're basically going to assign the values of that to the field. I wouldn't allow different objects to be injected here. To inject. So what's going to happen is we're going to provide our objects that we want to inject into our base. You know what? Let's use a supplier in this part like we did before. suppliers. Okay, so if that field is annotated with our inject uh, annotation, what do we do? We set value of that field. Well, we also need to make sure the object, I mean the field is um, public. Field. There was a way, I think it was get. No, 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 no. Get modifiers. Yep. Alright, so I'm kind of blanking out on a couple of things here, but I uh, moved it up. So, modifier is public, and then do field get modifiers. So we're looking for basically we're looking for fields that are public and has our annotation. Okay. Now we're safe to move on. Because if you if it's not public, then you cannot set it. And then we also need to make sure it's not final. But yeah, I'm not gonna cover the case, we're just not gonna make them final, but you can you can check it the same way basically. Alright, so let's go ahead. So we have our field. Um, we found it and then Using our supplier, basically our supplier to get an object, and we're going to split the value of our supplier into that object, into the field, basically. Field set. So what happens here is that when you do so, field object is basically it's not particularly for the object instead of passing in. Field object is a reflection object that describes that field. So if you, when you do field set, you still need to provide it with an object to set it on. So this is the object to set it on, and then we're going to do supplier.get. Um, I think it throws an exception, that's why it's crying. Yep. I'm going to surround with try and catch, and then um, you, you can catch these excep exceptions and do stuff with it, but uh, we're just not going to bother for now. Hmm. Okay, so basically this is it for now. Um, we're just gonna have to create a example class. Okay, it's gonna have some public fields, which are all objects. That one. Let me zoom in again. Okay, and then in the constructor, we're going to use our injector in the constructor. Like this. We're going to send an instance of 
our own object to the constructor. So why is it crying? Oh yeah, it needs supplier. And our supplier is basically just going to return for now. Uh, a new object. But since it's object, you can literally return anything you want. Okay, and then that's it. So I'm just using Lambda for now because you already know that I'm using supplier. I want to make my constructor cleaner. Oh, yeah, the most important thing no, I don't. we need to add these. Injects. Yeah, I know I added this value, but um, yeah, um, we don't complicate things. There's no way we can use this. I'm just gonna remove it for now. But I'll show you what you can do with it. Well, you know what? Let's just we'll, we'll, we'll do something with it. Let's you let's just check that against a couple things. Let's have two suppliers. And depending on what we pass in as a string, we're going to use uh, a different supplier. There's, there's more you can do with it, but I'm just trying to keep it real simple. We have to add another one of these. So we just need to add the logic here now. There are two suppliers. Okay. Field get annotation. Value. So if the value equals one basically trying to make it simple here by extracting even beforehand so I have to keep extracting it every time. Sub two, then basically you do the same thing, but with supplier two. Okay. All right, so let's run it. See if there are any issues. This was the code we were coming for. Can comment that out. So by initializing, you already know that our annotation process is called. So I'm just going to check when an example object. Well, so I'm going to uh, print them all out to see if they're, they should be not null at this point. Like, that's all I care about. Right. Oh, they are null. So what went wrong? Let's investigate. Um, I have a feeling it has to. Sometimes it's just because they're public. Doesn't mean. Um, yeah, sometimes like setting the object might be causing issues, but let's see. I'm going to investigate and come back. Alright, guys, so I realized the issue was. That I was making the most rookie error. I was doing a string equals 
using uh, equal signs. I know, sad. Um, yeah, I mean, you have you, you see nothing. Um, but yeah, once you change the equals, uh, it just works. It works fine. So let's try it. As you can see, it generated new objects uh, for each, and the instances are the same. I mean, different. So just to make sure our annotations suppliers work properly. So I'm going to switch up our suppliers a little bit here. Um, I'm going to do this. So basically I want to each of them can do not supply new objects, I want them to supply an existing object. This way I can tell if they're working or not. I mean, you can always, you can just always run tests using Makito to, which will be the ideal way. And then test which supplier is uh, actually working. Now let's run. Yeah. Okay, so if you look here, I'm not sure if you can see. And, oh, I can zoom in pretty perfect. Um, so, so these two. Are the same as you can see. The first two are uh, tagged with the same supply thing, and then the other one is uh, tagged with its own and it's passing. So these are the memory addresses for each of them. And um, yep, so our supply framework using reflection works. I mean, our injection, like I said, it's a very basic dagger. But um, yeah, so in the next one, which I think will be a lot more interesting because we're going to end up creating our own actual annotation process from scratch. And then I'm going to push this to GitHub. If you want to check out the code, go ahead. Um, yeah, see you guys later.